And the chief person who's opposed that is Governor Abbott. In that 10 years, nine Republican-led states have raised their minimum wage. But it will never happen under Governor Abbott. That's why we need to elect a strong leader like Beto O'Rourke. Beto, Beto is committed to a $15 minimum wage. And you know, that's really important because you know that there are more people working for under $15 in Texas than in any other place. And one in five of our kids is living in poverty. And speaking of our kids, did you know that the average family, and if you've got kids, you unfortunately know this, but the average family is spending over $10,000 a year on childcare. And that's if you're lucky enough to have some childcare in your neighborhood that you can get your child into because over half of Texas families live in neighborhoods where childcare is unavailable. That costs that family an average of $3,500 a year in lost wages. We need to expand child care, and Beto is committed to that. You know, we spend more on child care. That 10300 on child care is more than it costs to go to one of our great Texas public universities like A&M, UT, UNT. Um, we're just spending it on child care here. 40% of Texans lack paid sick time, and 75% lack paid family leave. Beto is committed to uh, in expanding those opportunities. He's going to partner with unions and others to create a million good paying jobs with that $35 billion of infrastructure money that is coming to Texas. He's going to end, end Abbott cronyism and, and get good jobs, good paying jobs with good benefits uh, in the in the urban areas, in the suburban areas, and in the rural areas. So, well, I just want to encourage you, the races are tightened up. Uh, Congresswoman, Congresswoman-elect Crockett mentioned a uh, poll that has uh, the AGs uh, separated by, the AG and, and Michelle separated by two points. Beto's numbers, likewise, are tightening up. We've got to do everything uh, that we can uh, to win this thing. So. Please volunteer. Join us in block walking. It's getting cooler now. Do everything that you can. You're the best of the best to be here today. And thank you for it. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you do for the Democratic Party and our candidates. God bless y'all. And I'll let y'all get back to whatever you're doing next. All right, y'all. If you're ready to fix the damn grid, we have the man here in town, all the way from Austin, Texas, who's going to make sure we have a working grid every day of the year. Give it up. Give it up for my good friend, Mike Collier. Thank you. How is everybody? Nice and hot, right? Hi. Hi. Oh, it's so Does anybody in this crowd value democracy? Let me hear it from you. Does anybody in this crowd value justice? And honesty in government, well, thou I know I'm in the company of Democrats. Hello, Texas Democrats. My name is Mike Collier, and my job is to whoop Dan Patrick. You going to help me? So I got to tell you, I am. people ask me, how's the campaign going? And I tell them, nine years in, two months to go. That's a fact. I've been working on this for a long time, and you know that. I've been in this fight with you all for a long time because I know that we must win statewide. I ran four years ago, I came close, and I said I'm going to stay in this fight, and I'm working to make sure that Beto O'Rourke is our next governor. And I want Rochelle Garza, who I'll introduce in a minute, to be our next attorney general. And Democrats all up and down the line, and I want the next lieutenant governor to be Dan, not to be Dan Patrick, to be a Democrat. Now just imagine when Dan Patrick is just a distant memory of a bad dream. What happens to the state? We're going to have great public education. Are you with me? And we're going to solve this property tax ripoff with the big corporations are not paying their share. And it lands on our backs and that's got to stop. We'll expand Medicaid. We'll have criminal justice reform. We'll legalize marijuana. I hope you're okay with that. 
I have a confession to make. I tiptoed around that last yacht, last time I ran because my mom was still living and I didn't want to get into what I did on the UT campus in the 70s. She's in heaven and I can tell you that I've always thought that we need to legalize marijuana. So we're going to do that. And we're going to fix a damn grid. And those are the things we're going to do together. And also, and perhaps most importantly, and I remember this, when you think about how you're going to spend your time in the next two months, this is not the same state that it was four years ago. Not even close. Democrats must answer the call. We are the party that fights for freedom and for democracy and for our rights. Do you agree? Yeah. Like the right to vote and to make sure your voice is heard. For the LGBT community, the right to live and love as you wish in freedom. And for women, the right to make the decision only you can make about your body and your health care. That's what this election is all about. That's why we're Democrats, and that's why we're going to whoop them. Thank you so much. Mike Collier for Lieutenant Governor. Probably the best part of the job for me is to, now hold your applause, is to introduce to you our next Attorney General. I want you to know this. I met Rochelle when we were competing in the primary, and I said to myself, when she is Attorney General, I'm going to sleep like a baby, because then I will know that our laws will work for us as Texans. She is a fabulous person, a mom, and when she is our next Attorney General, I'll be so proud to say I knew her when, and she will be fabulous. Put it up. Give it up for Rochelle Garza, your next Attorney General. Give it up for Mike. How's everybody doing? I know it's getting hot. Uh, I'm Rochelle Garza. I am your Democratic nominee for Texas Attorney General. I am, I am so proud to be here. I'm the first Latina to ever be nominated to this position and when elected, when elected I'll be the first woman and first Latina ever to serve in this role. And I'm, I'm so touched to be here today. My parents are in town. I'm the daughter of two public school teachers. And I'm really thankful to the labor movement because it's because of it's because of the labor movement and union organizing that we enjoy workplace protections today. So thank you all for being here as well. So I'm I'm running against criminally indicted Ken Paxton. It sounds like y'all don't know much about Ken Paxton. Um, Ken Paxton hasn't seen a, seen a law he doesn't want to break because he does not believe the law applies to him. He has been under criminal indictment for more than seven years without trial. That wouldn't happen for any other regular Texan. He tried to overturn the 2020 election and he may lose his law license because of it. He's under FBI investigation for fraud. He is bad for Texas. Yeah. He's harmful for our families, for our children, and he has been trying to undo voting rights, workers' protections, and women's rights at every turn. He has got to go. Yeah. Now, the Attorney General is supposed to be the people's lawyer, and that's, that's what I want to do with this office. I want to give it back to the people. I want to make sure that we are answering to each and every one of you and putting Texas families first. Yeah. Now, I don't have to tell you what a struggle everybody is going through right now. You know, we're struggling to pay the bills. We're struggling to make sure our families are safe. That, that, that women have access to abortion care, that their pregnancies are safe. We are struggling right now. But right now, we have the opportunity to vote these folks out of office. Yeah. And we're going to get it done. I am within two points of unseating Ken Paxton. We're going to get it done. 
When elected, I'm gonna answer to all of you. I'm gonna answer to the people of Texas. I am going to make sure that we have a civil rights division that protects the integrity and dignity of every single Texan. <laughs> that we have a Workers' Protection Bureau that stands up for workers, that, ma that makes sure that, that no one is taking an advantage of with, with the benefits that are due to them that workers are not misclassified intentionally and hold the power to powerful to account because that's what the people's attorney is supposed to do. Yeah. Now this fight is not new to me. I have fought for, for civil rights for years. I fought on behalf of a young woman who needed access to abortion care against the Trump administration, against, against my opponent, against Brett Kavanaugh. And I know that we can do it again. We have people power. The people yeah, yeah. will stand up together in November and get this done. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm, I'm constantly inspired. I'm a mom. I, I just had a baby five months ago and I wanna make sure that she, <laughs> that's right, mama power, mama power. We're gonna change this state together for our children, for our future, for the Texas that we all deserve. So uh, I, I am here with you, I see you, I'm in this fight with you, and let's get it done come November, y'all. Let's win in November. Thank you so much. Rochelle Garza, Texas Attorney General.